Hey guys, in tonight's news update we want to talk about erectile dysfunction and specifically we want to talk about five treatments that you really want to try to avoid. So that's what we're going to do today. This is Arnold Broad at Healthy at 60 Plus. If you have any questions about this video or any of the videos on my channel, just give me a call or text me at 609-410-4790. If you'd rather, you can leave a question in the comment section below this video. Let's take a look at what we have today. Now let me start by saying that the treatments I'm suggesting to try to avoid may be the last resort for some frustrated men. So don't discount them out of hand, but, you know, look at them long and hard. On the other hand, I've actually talked to men who have had some of these treatments offered and even pushed as the first choice and not the last choice. They, they, didn't, they just jump right in. Doctors just jump right into those. And since these treatments are out-of-pocket expenses and expensive, one may wonder if it's more about the money than the best choice for the patient. Now, erectile dysfunction is a symptom of cardiovascular issues. It is a problem into itself, but it's caused by something else, and that something else it's caused by are cardiovascular issues. And the treatments we're going to discuss work as symptom relief and do not address underlying issues. So that's, that's really important to understand, that you're not getting a cure, you're just getting some symptom relief, if they work for you. And I'm going to list these treatments starting with the least invasive to the most invasive. And I'm not going to include a list in the list any ED meds, you know, Viagra, Cialis, Levitra. And the reason I'm not doing that is every man I've talked to has been offered or prescribed one of those meds when they go in to try to find out what they can do about their ED. They've never been talked to, to about symptom, uh, that ED is a symptom of something else. It's just, oh, you got ED? Here, take this. So I'm not including that since everybody gets offered that. So the first one is something called Gaines Wave. And it's been around for a couple of years, and it's a simple protocol that uses high frequency acoustic sound. It's a protocol. It's wave therapy works by breaking up plaque formations in the blood vessels of the penis and by stimulating growth of new blood vessels in the penis. Doctors have been using this across the country. You need to be certified. You have to take classes in it. The deal with the Gaines wave is that, again, it's symptom relief cost about $3,000 to do a course of usually six treatments twice a week for three weeks. And then you you need kind of booster treatments. Um, so you're going to have to go in every six months, every year. They say that, that it lasts up to two years. Things I've heard of, it really talks about you know, you want to go every six months to a year to get treatment. So symptom relief generally works for you, but you really have to keep doing it again and again. Kind of along the same lines is something called the P-Shot. They pull blood out, um, centrifuge it, spin it in, in a special machine that's used for this protocol and then re-inject it back into the penis. It helps to increase blood flow. It helps to get rid of plaque. It helps to grow some new blood vessels. Generally speaking, you need to do it once a year for the results to keep working. Both the Gaines Wave and the P-Shot have generally poor results if you're diabetic. There's something called penile suppositories. 
and kind of as the name implies you're taking a medication and inserting it into the urethra into the penis it usually takes five to ten minutes to produce an erection it works the same way as increasing blood flow downside is that there can be minor bleeding or spotting some dizziness some swelling some rapid heartbeat some pain in the penis testicles or groin area but you know it it works for it definitely works for guys next is penile injection therapy kind of the same principle as the penile suppositories um, intracavernous injections involves injecting a vasodilator into the penis and due to the invasive nature is often used in men who have failed other therapies it works for guys that it works with though there is a whole lot of squeamishness about giving yourself shots there is one big time downside for continued use of this and that is the potential of scar tissue being built up at any of the sites that you would use the injection in and can cause something called Peyronie's disease which is produces a curvature in an erect when you get an erection or an erect penis so which can be painful and interfere with intercourse depending on how severe the curvature is so that is definitely one downside of these of these um, injection therapies and last but not least and the most invasive is penile implants and these are devices placed inside the penis to allow men to have who have ED um, to get an erection and penile implants are typically recommended recommended after other treatments for ED fails though I've talked to men who have had that as a first level of treatment there are different kinds of penile implants a lot of them are offered to men who've had prostate cancer surgery that has done nerve damage so these are kind of last resort things for that but if you just have straight ED that's really the end of the line kind of potential treatment for it so we have five things that you really would like to try to avoid if you can from the least invasive to the most invasive and as I said at the beginning these may be appropriate after less less costly and less invasive methods have been tried now the least costly and the least invasive that really works at curing ED by getting to the root cause of the problem the lifestyle changes better exercise losing weight stopping smoking a good diet good supplements less stress less alcohol use all of these kind of things really can not only improve ED problems but they improve ED problems because they improve your lifestyle and your life condition that's the best way to go about it one of the things that I use is some in, in the supplement range is called nitric oxide therapy a particular product I use is pro arginine plus nitric oxide therapy really works at the underlying cause of erectile dysfunction and has been working for many years in helping men to revitalize their cardiovascular system and to reverse ED issues now I have a really good video on nitric oxide therapy and I'm leaving a link to it in the description or in the comment section below this video so both places you can get at it if you have any questions about nitric oxide therapy about this video or any of the videos on my channel just give me a call or text me at 609-410-4790 
If you'd rather leave a question, you could do that in the comments section below this video. If you want to see more videos in my channel, subscribe to this channel, like this video, you'll be notified when new ones are produced. I want to thank you for stopping by today and watching this video. Have a great day, and here's to your good health.